Hey, welcome back. We have a knife here. This is one I've been in search of for a while. Uh, let's get it unboxed here. I think this is... There we go. Uh, one I've been in search of for quite a while. This one actually doesn't have any of uh, my personal info on it, so you get to do it on screen. Um, and it is uh, not something that's being made right now, so it's uh, in search of rare kind of knife. It is from Brown Knives, one of my favorite knife makers, about 30 minutes from me here in Bellingham, Washington. He does this in Blaine, Washington, and this is the Servo. Ooh, he did this a little different back then, so that's cool. Uh, now this is uh, a lot more basic. This was like custom fit for the knife, which is really cool. So this is also neat, I thought, because this is an M390 blade steel. He does do some in 20 CV now, but not M390 anymore. Um, I was really, uh, I saw different, uh, different pictures of this particular build. <laughs> that is sweet. And, uh, and some it looked more gray and some it looked more blue. In person it looks definitely more gray, so that's good. But I really was impressed with this milling. And you can actually see within the milling, there's little milling patterns in there that really caught my eye. One of these showed up on uh, Craigslist. One of these showed up on the Facebook uh, group, the Brown Knives Facebook group, um, like a month earlier. And a buddy of mine and I both went after it. And I said, "Hey, you know, you grab it." Um, you know, I felt like he really wanted it. <clears throat> and then literally the same knife came up, plus the Timascus pocket clip and backspacer, which I love. It was definitely more expensive. Oh, and uh, uh, over travel stop. It was definitely more expensive, but not so much more that I'm concerned about it. It is looking very worth it. Now, the first thing I'll say about this knife, because um, you may know some brown knives. Wow, that is a really nice case, by the way. I, uh, I have to say, I do nerd out a little bit on this stuff. I know some other knife reviewers have gone on and said that they don't care anything about the packaging. I think if price, if I had to pay for it specifically, I might agree, but if it's going to be included anyways, I have to say this is like really nice packaging and I do appreciate it personally. Um, however, I do also appreciate really efficient like the Demco boxes. Um, these ones right here are my favorite because that takes up the least amount of space in my, uh, in my toolbox and safe. Um, but anyways, um, the size is kind of interesting. It's actually bigger than an 80, 20.5. Um, and let me see what I have from Brown right here. It's kind of in between like a mini FSD and a full size FSD. In fact, it might be the size of a full size FSD, which is interesting. So he started to make some of his knives smaller over time, which is interesting to me. Anyways, let's, uh, move all this stuff out of the way. Kind of cool how he included a tool uh, with it as well. And let's, uh, let's get into it here. See how the action is and everything. If I can actually get out of my own way here. There we go. There we go. All right. Ooh, wow. The deployment's a little strong. Uh, maybe it's just, wow. <laughs> that was sweet. Oh man. I wonder if you can use this. I know on the uh, Exponent, I've seen people use this fuller to deploy it. I don't, I don't know if you can get enough purchase on this one. Pretty close. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not, does not appear to be designed to do that. I'm now losing it now that I've gotten it once. Um, it's really a flipper. So that's like the one downside on this. I'm not a big uh, flipper knife fan. Holy crap this is as good as the this might be better action than the cortex that is like maybe yeah i don't know if i'd say it's the best closing action i've ever felt but that's one of the best closing actions i've ever felt it's it's you know it's right reminds me a lot of uh the arius the koenig arius wow sweet all right now overall aesthetics I didn't get this for a long time for a reason. I had to find one that had really, to me, uh, appealing milling. Um, and, you know, in this case, the Timascus also helps. This is very pokey, by the way. Uh, I got a feeling a lot of people poked holes. I don't know if all of them are like this, but this little corner right here is freaking sharp. I don't know if it got 
damaged or if that's just how it was, but if that's how they were, I bet a lot of people poked holes in their clothing with that because that is like sharp right there. Um, the top of it's not, but like inside underneath is actually sharp. Um, so if I were to actually think about carrying this, I would definitely sand that off underneath there because that is really pokey. Beautiful, beautiful. Look how tight the Timascus weave is on this. I don't know if you call it a weave. The Timascus layering is just crazy. So yeah, I mean like skinny pocket clip, kind of big knife. Like overall, this is not my jam. But as a brown collector, I wanted to have one of each. I love that servo there. And uh, that's kind of nice that you can two-hand it really easily. So there's not really a good like one-handed deployment aside from... Aside from the uh, the flipper tab, but you can two hand it really nicely, actually. So that's that's pretty nice. Let's see what it looks like on inside the frame. Very taken down. A lot of milling in the uh, in the titanium to reduce weight. Classic, I'd say Craig. Just crazy milling. See if anything's written in there like it has been on a lot of his other newer knives. Uh, I'm gonna need some light on the subject. This is a, feels like that blade just uh, wants to slice something too. It's really thin behind the edge. I'm trying to be careful around it because I it feels like one of those ones where if you make a mistake around it, you're, you're in trouble. So the top side does not appear to have anything written in there. That'll check in here. No more about the other side. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if anything's written inside this one. Does not appear so. I could be wrong though. I could just be looking from the wrong angles, but I don't think anything's actually milled inside this one. So, you know, in the other ones, they have like Blaine WA written inside of them and other things. Love this. Uh, it's a little small. I kind of wish it was almost a little bigger. But the uh, I really like when the pivot collar, or whatever you want to call it, the pivot hardware is embedded and not circular. It, it's really uh, a lot easier to work on. And love how big that is. Holy smokes. So I guess that might be proprietary, which is why I included it as a tool. But I'm not 100% sure. But that's a really nice milled out. Like, I think he made that in his shop. Uh, that's pretty neat. You know, I'm going to be a little biased on this. If this was made by other makers, I might not like it as much as I do. But, I mean, you know what I'm going to say about this? This feels on the level of, like, a Holt to me. Maybe not quite as good on the deployment action, and the lock bar is a little more sensitive. Um, like, you really want to stay off that lock bar, or it gets really hard to... Uh, to actuate, luckily there's a you know a lot of space. The lock bar is fairly, you know, it's only a third of it and two thirds of it almost, or maybe three fifths of the handle. Uh, you have room to stay off of it. If you stay off of it, it's really easy to deploy. If you're on it a little bit, you get a lot of hit strong detent. So that lock bar pressure is really important um, to uh, to avoid. Perfect centering as per usual. And this is a pre-owned one, just to be clear, these are not made anymore. Um, but man, it looks like it's in really good shape. Like I don't think this was ever cut with, if I had to guess. I'm really, you know, there've been a lot of ups and downs on Craig Brown's uh, edges. So I'm really tempted to give it a go. So yeah, this one stacks up. I'd say it's, Decent, nothing to write home about, um, but it's decent. Man, that's a nice one. I'm excited to uh, to have that one in the collection. Um, just a beautiful, what I'll call, you know, like kind of semi-custom uh, knife that's got some real character to it and uh, represents a little bit of the, the um, I'm trying to think of the right word, the um, the range of Craig Brown uh, and what he's done. He's uh, he's done some really interesting stuff. And I think this is representative of that. 
So I think my last one, I mean, I may try and get a parabolic, but they're pretty hard to get. And I don't really know if it's worth it to me to spend the money uh, on that particular knife. I, I, I'd like to get it if it is the right one and the right price for sure. Um, but definitely try and get an exponent because um, there are quite a few of those out there and not quite as crazy. I saw a beautiful Timascus one go with a in just minutes for just, God, just a crazy price. And uh, it had a mere polished blade that uh, is to die for. So I'm going to always be harassing that particular buyer. They made a mistake of buying it because now I'm going to ask them once a month if they're willing to sell it. <laughs> uh, I love hunting for knives, as you uh, can tell. Now I'm going, I'm going to be completely honest with you here, because this is a very representative of my collection. And I'm doing this late in the video, so I can get away with it a little more, because most of you abandon after a certain point in the video. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to reduce some of my collection, because I've overdone it. And, uh, you know, I, I want to be responsible and stand up and say I've overdone it. I uh, I had a little more time in my work schedule the last few months and got to uh, have a little too much fun for the last half year or so. But it's gotten to that point where it's time to sell a lot of it. And I've been selling quite a few knives per week lately. Um, and it, it feels good. It's harder. It's not as fun as buying, for sure, for me at least. Um, but it has been uh, good to, to get rid of some stuff that's just sitting around and not getting used anyways and make it available to other people in the community. I am still trying to get one of every brown knife, but I'm going to sell a lot of my redundancy in my brown collection. So if you're looking for things like a brown FSD, um, feel free to hit me up because I have quite a few of those full-size brown FSDs and I may be looking to move some of those soon. Uh, Demco G10s, maybe a titanium or two, not the full size, sorry, I know you're all wanting that, but that's not for sale right now. <clears throat> and then just a bunch of others. I got a lot of a lot of knives here that don't uh, do not do a lot, so um, there will be some knives for sale. Feel free to let me know if there's one that you've seen on the channel that you'd be interested in, but this would not be one of them. Really happy to have this, and uh, I'll just do one last close-up to close here. And with that, please like, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Take care.